Andy, um, I've just, uh, off the top of my head, been thinking we're halfway through the season now. Um, Bournemouth, Chelsea, Villa, Wolves, all exited managers, and now Everton. So correct me if I'm wrong, but this is at least number five so far this season. Indeed, yeah. And uh, hardly surprising, really. I think that uh, Frank Lampard paid the price for Everton's uh, appalling problems. Uh, some might say he's the fall guy because the problems are in the boardroom rather than in the manager's office but uh, with such a dreadful run of results and having lost at West Ham at the weekend I think it was inevitable that he was going to go uh, and uh, the protests won't go away though at Everton because the fans are still furious with the board uh, deep-rooted problems that could uh, cost them their Premier League status Yes, explain that to us it's all about the financial fear play isn't it? Or, or is that, sorry, I mean apart from the fact that they might get relegated but they're also in trouble for that yeah, they are. I mean, uh, financial fair play is a murky world, a mysterious world about which, uh, uh, you know, there's been all sorts of uh, inquiries uh, in regards to various clubs and uh, uh, allegations, some of which have been unfounded. So um, we'll have to wait and see on that from, from Everton. And there it's, inevitably, there's, there's always uh, some kind of, uh, I'm not saying a cover-up, but it, these things, things tend to sort of die down and go away and... Uh, and, and who knows how the football hierarchy uh, operate anyway. So uh, it's all very puzzling the way that football finances are, are all uh, diffied up. But uh, yeah, I mean, the loss for Everton would be the, the status of the Premier League, which is uh, unthinkable, especially for a club that's supposed to be moving to a new stadium yes, yes. Uh, in, in, the, in a couple of seasons. So uh, it, it's just symptomatic, really, of a club that has just completely lost its direction. And the finger points very much so at uh, the people... Who, who are running Everton and have just, and, and in particular, uh, Fahari, the uh, owner, and the way that they've just struggled to find a manager, really, that can uh, provide them some kind of stability. That, you know, those those days of David Moyes seem a lot, and the stability that he provided seem an awful long time ago. I don't think uh, of the managers that have had the last few years, what, they're, they're looking for the sixth permanent manager in the last five years, Everton, which is uh, a telltale symptom of the the lack of uh, stability that the club was suffering from. Yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, there was an irony, wasn't there, that this fixture called, uh, or, you know, or called El Sacco between West Ham and Everton at the weekend. David Moyes in charge of Everton, and I mean, he was such a great success for them, and he he wins for West Ham, and and that means the end of Frank Lampard. Just on a, just on a on a coaching slash um, manager, just a, a a perspective on that. I mean, you know, is he any good, Lampard? Because we saw Steven Gerrard get get arched from Aston Villa as well. He had a great success at Rangers. But, you know, these guys, I don't know whether you're meant to earn coaching badges or whether they are irrelevant or irrelevant. These are great past players who've been given huge opportunities. Lampard at Chelsea took off like a rocket. That didn't work out. Are these guys, and especially Frank Lampard we're talking about, is he actually a good coach or not? Uh uh, don't know is the simple answer and I know what you're, you're leaning towards and I couldn't agree more with you to be honest with you just because he's a famous former player doesn't mean to say that he's going to be a good uh, manager um, and uh, yeah I think Stephen Gerrard falls into that category as well because you can't really judge him on his Rangers performance yeah alright they got the better of Celtic but uh, in England it's not just a matter of getting the better of uh, one other team it's a matter of getting the better of 19 other teams and certainly half a dozen who would be serious challenges for for the top uh, four places, for the Champions League places. So I just still don't know about Frank Lampard. Uh, got fired from Chelsea, uh, did OK at Derby, one division below the top flight. Uh, and then Everton, obviously, uh, difficult to say whether it worked out for him. Uh, the, the chairman might turn around and say, well, he's had some resources to spend, so it's up to him. But... Uh, uh, no doubt he'll get another job. He's bound to. Um, Gerard's not found it that easy to get back in. Whether he's got that appetite to get straight back in, I don't know. Um, but again, Stephen Gerrard, completely unproven in the Premier League. And, uh, you know, I, I, my mind drifts back to Bobby Charlton, who was the manager at Preston North End, yes. and he, mm. he didn't work out for Bobby Charlton. He was a fantastic footballer, one of the world's greatest, but it ain't necessarily so that you're going to be a good manager. Um, and th that's the skill, I suppose, who is going to come in at Everton and and provide them with this escape act that they need and also provide them with some kind of stability. But I don't think there is going to be any kind of uh, prospect of, uh, of of a settled pattern at the club 
whilst there's all this uh, rancor, this this anger among the, the the supporters who are protesting against the the hierarchy, they want them out. They want new owners, and and that's easier said than done. Finally and quickly, and thank you so much for your time, Andy Buckley, BBC and Talksport, with us here on the platform. How much influence do the fans have on this? I mean, as a fan, we all think that we own our team and, and we scream and shout. And they, I mean, these days it's all social media and you can get petitions and you can create videos and TikToks and do all of that. You can even stand outside the ground waving placards. Uh, you can chant at the game. You can take signs, all of that. How much does it actually affect anything? Well, I think the fans certainly uh, have an influence and, and they get to the owner. Um, however remote and distant uh, the owner might be. Uh, I mean, Mashiri uh, was there, I think, at the weekend, wasn't he? He's hardly shown his face, um, really, at Everton. But but the fans do have a powerful voice in terms of they can uh, influence. Now, the, the manager's gone, so the, you could turn around and say, well, the owner's just taken the easy way out. He's got rid of the manager, whereas really the problem's not, as I mentioned at the start, and not really in... Uh, all right, in the dressing room they are because our Everton's players should be doing a lot better than they they have been doing. But it's the, it's an easy it's an easy way out, and it's the owners who've got to go. They're obviously dysfunctional. There's a lot of breakdown in communications between uh, the, the the powers that be at Goodison Park, and there has been for quite some time. So until that gets resolved, um, then then you can, you can swap managers. I, I remember Michael Manchester City in the nineties. Uh, kept changing the manager, but it, it, the problem was with the, the owners, and it's the same old story. Until you get rid of the owners, then you're not going to get that kind of um, consistency that you're looking for. I mean, a couple of names that have been chucked out there just to throw in: uh, Marcelo Bielsa, the former Leeds United manager; Sean Dyche, the former Burnley manager. Their names have been linked with it. Uh, former Southampton boss. Ralph Hassan will also been linked with Everton, but I don't think any of those names are going to kind of uh, have the Everton fans licking the lips, thinking, "Oh yeah, let's get him in," because their beef isn't so much with. I don't think it was with Frank Lampard. Uh, their argument is with the people who are running the club, and that's where Everton are ravaged by this kind of uh, uncertainty, the lack of leadership. They even made a mess of the announcing the fact that the. Frank Lampard had been sacked. It, it, it sort of the, the the news kind of drifted out, and it was unconfirmed. And then Everton finally confirmed that he had gone. And when really it was probably one of the worst kept secrets that he was going to go, and inevitably he went. So it, it's just a complete and utter mess, really, at one of the great institutions of English football. Devlin. Tomorrow, and Queens Park Rangers have won it. Platform. So what do the fans think about this? Now, whether you like Premier League football or whether you're interested in Everton or not, I, I, I just I like it as a case study. Anyone who is devoted to their team, be it NFL, be it rugby league, be it rugby, whatever it is, the coach gets sacked. Well, that never happens in New Zealand, doesn't it? But say, you know, say you're an English rugby fan, Eddie Jones gets sacked. How do you react? How do the fans react? So my mate from Wellington, Matt McLaughlin, he's the biggest Everton fan I know. Been over there and watched the team many, 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 many times. Mark Watson uh, joining us. Apologise to me! That's in about mm, 25, 26, 27 minutes or so, but Matt McLaughlin, was it a shock? Was it a surprise this news made or not? Look, it wasn't. It wasn't a shock or a surprise, given um, the way the season's gone. Given the way the last 12 months has gone and probably the way that the last five years have gone. Marty, it's, it's not a shock at all. Very disappointing, though, because I just felt that uh, of anybody, Frank Lampard actually understood our club. He got the fans. He got what we were all about uh, and he was trying to put processes in place. But I think he was being hamstrung by what was going on up on the board. Yeah, well, okay. Who do you blame as a fan? Do you blame Frank? Do you blame the team for these results? Do you go higher to the board? Who? Well, you've got to go higher to the board. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the team that is out there. It's the team that is playing poorly. It's a team that is not um, living up to expectations. But then the team's been assembled and they've got... They've got um, you know, they've got a lot of pressure on their shoulders. Um, a lot of these players that are just not up to um, Premier League standard or certainly the Everton standard, yet, you know, they've, they've been bought for 25, 30, 35 million pounds. So there's a lot of pressure on them. And they're just not up to it. They're just not good enough. So, you know, that, that, that in, in, in one sense, has got to, you've got to look at the player. Uh, but then you've got to look back to the board. You've got to look back to the director of football. You've got to look back to the people that have made the decisions at the football club as to why some of these players and some of these managers have been brought in because, quite frankly, they're just not up to it.
Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah. So, so how many have you had now? What is it? You've had 19 managers in eight months or something ridiculous, isn't it? What is it? Eight and nine years? Oh, nine? Twi- I think it's 22. Yeah, look, it's, I think it's six and five years full-time managers, and that doesn't go... That doesn't take into account, um, you know, the, the temporary manager, Duncan, uh, who, who came in um, as well, just on an temp- interim basis. Um, you know, Martinez, Marco Silva, Allardyce, Ronald Koeman, I mean, Ancelotti, I mean, that to me was the biggest disappointment because I think that was a, that was a, a, a you know, that was a coup for us at Everton. That was fantastic. And he was doing a really good job. And, you know, uh, through the pandemic, and we could see some light at the end of the tunnel. We had a new stadium. We had Ancelotti. We were on fire, and then he just ups and leaves. But, you know, who could blame him? And again, who could blame him when you look at the reasons why he's left? Why would you stay at a club that can't spend any money, uh, is potentially going to be mid-table or in the relegation zone, or go to Real Madrid? And he went to Real Madrid and he won the Champions League. Yeah, Was he a good coach, Lampard? Was he a good manager or not? Look, I, I think he was okay. I, I, I liked the way that he spoke. I liked the, the, the fact that he kind of spoke sort of plain English when he was... When he was um, in interviews, and he told the fans. You know, he talked. He talked to the fans, um, sort of one on one. You know, so I did like that. I, I really liked it. Um, technically, um, probably not fantastic. You know, you look at the last few games where uh, things have not been going well, or we've been ahead, um, and he's not changed anything. He's kept things as they are, and and we lose. We're going to lose. So you know, uh, perhaps he needs. Um, he needs a, a little bit more work. Perhaps he's not the right guy for Everton Football Club, but a real shame because he's a, he's a dude. I really like him, and, and um, I just, you know, I, I think he's been hard done by. What is your message to the board? I mean, are you one of those ones? Do you get on the social media? Do you rant at the board? Do you phone the board? Do you text the board? Do you email the board? No, oh, I, I, I do often, although I'm probably too busy texting you. My frustration is oh, yeah. with Everton Tech Board. But, but um, you know, I, I, just, I think there's, there's, there is also a lot of division amongst um, our supporters, and Goodison Park, been to Goodison Park a lot. It's an amazing ground. It's, it's beautiful. Um, the fans are feverish. Uh, they're, they're just their support is, is just magnificent. But on the flip side of that, when things don't go our way and they've not been going our way lately, um, you know, we, we, there's a real toxic uh, atmosphere, and you can see and you can hear it when we're watching Everton games at the moment. And it's just you know the the the, the fans are getting on the players' backs. It's not helping the players. So all in all, it's just it's not great. It's not a great environment for um, for Everton Football Club and, and, and for its fans and, and the players. Can you survive, or are you going to have that brand new Flash Stadium down the waterfront playing Rotherham and Scunthorpe? Yeah, look, I'm looking forward to Preston North End Go on. on a Tuesday night. I might yeah. shoot over there myself and have a look at that one on the on the on the, on the docks. But um, look, we it, it's it's salvageable. You look at the squad, and you know there are some quality players. There are some leaders. Um, I'm not quite sure what needs to happen. We need to we need to, to to squeeze up at the back a little bit, but we need to score some goals. We need to get Dominic Calvert Lewin, who you know only 80 months ago was a, was a um, was in the England squad mm. squad and was mm. scoring, goals, scoring goals for fun for Everton. But he's been injured a lot of the time. Um, we did have Richarlison at the time. There was there was um, you know we were getting balls into the box um, to Calvert Lewin. We're not getting that uh, happening at the moment. So you know, but maybe with a, with a little bit of smart recruitment, um, a manager that can come in. We get that new manager bounce. We get uh, you know, we go undefeated for three or four games. We get six or seven points on the board. Next thing, we're 13th or 14th. Yeah, we can do it. Um, will it happen? Oh, I'm just not so sure, mate.